Well, hey, good morning, church. We'll try that one more time. Good morning, church. Man, we're glad you all are here this morning. I'm excited to introduce to you uh, Cliff Smith, who is uh, the representative for CAS, which stands for Christian Arabic Services. He's one of the missionaries that we uh, support. Uh, actually, the missionary that we support is Safa and his wife, Mona. Um, and they're doing some great things throughout Egypt and, and really uh, all of the Arab world and, and even beyond. And so uh, we're happy to have him here this morning. This morning he shared a bit of uh, the, the nuts and bolts of things that are going on over there. And um, in the midst of that, I, I mentioned to, to those that were present that um, this is what we're all about. And we like to be transparent. We like to share with you the stuff that, that we're doing and, and the, uh, the avenues that we're giving toward. Um, our, our mission statement here at Milford Christian Church is creating lifelong followers of Jesus together. And that's not just us together in this room, that's us with Christians around the world who are sharing the gospel. And so we are excited that uh, Cliff is here this morning um, to help us see who else we are together with. And so I want to ask that you will uh, welcome him warmly, and uh, we'll turn this time over to him as he gives us the message from God's Word. Thank you, brother. brother. Hey, it's great to be here. Uh, just asked the pastor how long I can speak, and he said until they cut off your mic. So, <laughs> I can have a little longer, right? <laughs> no, it is. I've, I've heard so much about you guys, uh, your faithfulness and supporting missions of reaching people in Egypt. Uh, you guys are unique. It is amazing that right now we've got about 560 churches that have been planted uh, by Safa and Mona Fahimi. And the amazing thing is that we only have about 30 churches that support us. And you guys have been faithful. Every month we know it's going to be there. Every year we know that uh, God is going to speak through you. And I thank you for that, and I appreciate it. But being a very transparent guy, I'm going to be honest with you, right from the beginning, I'm going to ask you for more. Cross my heart. Not only that, I'm going to ask your church for more. I'm going to ask you guys that have never had an individual ministry or mission, <clears throat> you as a person, you as a family have supported, I'm going to ask you to get involved. And I'm going to tell you why in, in my message. It is a biblical reason. The one thing I want to get out of the way right now is that when you give towards CAS, less than 5%, less than 5%, of what's totally given goes to expenses. And if you you can get with your pastor and he will verify that that figures usually 15, 20, 25, many times more than that. So it just simply says 95% of what we get goes direct to Egypt. I'm going to ask you to pray for Mona, Safa, and Egypt like you've never prayed before. Write it on a card. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm such a seasoned veteran, that's the new words for an old guy, <laughs> that I write notes all the time. Uh, the tricky part is, is remembering where I put the notes for specific things, but, but we work on that. I'm going to ask you to give, because God has opened doors in Egypt like he has never opened before. For the first time in all the history of Egypt, a Christian can buy property and build a church. Yeah, give the Lord a hand. That's, that's been going on for six years, and we have only one more six-year term. After that, we don't know who's going to be in charge. And then lastly, I'm going to ask you to go. I have trained a group of men at Tomoka, and they will go anywhere in the United States, get with you a team of 10, 12, 20, from right here in good old Milford, and they will lead you into Egypt, show you sites you have never seen, 
show you worship that is out of this world, and bring you home safely, all the while training one of you to be a leader. So year after year, Milford can go to Egypt. Now, I see a lot of seasoned people like me, and you're probably wondering, well, I'm old and I can't go. I'm 77 years old. Two years ago, I had four bypasses. A week after I came back from Egypt, I wondered why I was tired, but I had four bypasses, and eight months later, I was back in Egypt. So it's an easy trip. Anybody can do it. So now we know why I'm speaking, right? I'll tell you a little about myself. I've been in a ministry for about 50 years, 21 uh, of the last 50 has been in missions. I've made over 100 trips planting churches on five continents. So God has called me to this. In 2018, God introduced me to Safa, and I have kind of focused since then on the ministry in Egypt because it's not staying in Egypt. Uh, right now, there are over a million Sudanese fleeing into Egypt for their lives every year. And to the Egyptian government, Sudanese are not people, so you can share the gospel with them. You can do anything you want. And so we're sending Sudanese all over the world. We have churches they started in Oregon, in Washington State, in Toronto, Canada, and in Europe. The gospel is going. God is blessing. I could keep going on, but let me, let me just tell you this. Here's what I'd like for you to pick up. These things are out front. Pick them up. I want you to read about them, everything that's going on. Then Joe Putting, my pastor, wrote this book. This is the story of the last 13 years of Tomoka Christian Church. It's not a church. It's not a book that teaches you how to be a mega church. But that's what happened. 13 years ago, 200 people made a commitment to plant a church in every state in the union and every country in the world, 200 people. That's now completed. Easter Sunday, we had 6,000 on our campus. Our mission budget is $4 million a year. I don't know what the other budget is. That, that's their problem. I just, I just take care of the mission budget. That's how they grew, from simply saying yes to an opportunity that God gives you. You say, well, I can have. that doesn't mean every. I can tell you of a church of 300 people that I coached 15 years ago how to get a missions uh, program started. I carried them on their first mission trip, turned them loose. They were running about 275, and they had, their budget was $175,000. They are now running about 300, and the reason they're only running 300 is they have planted 12 churches. As they grow, they look at zip codes, find a place that's got a lot of people, train leaders, send them out, and the their attendance goes down, but their budget right now is three-quarters of a million dollars. I'm not giving you pie in the sky by and by. I'm sick and tired of Christian people who know the Word of God to be afraid to say God's blessing is on us. And for the heretics on television that come up with this name and claim it junk, don't let them scare you. God has said, when I send you, I will provide for you. And that is a promise straight from the Word of God. And I promise you, if you will say yes in a hearty way, I don't know what's going to happen to this church, but I tell you what, the people in Ohio will know that there has been a group of crazy people who have simply believed God and said yes, and they have changed the world. 
That's our call, friend. Why? Why Egypt? In Isaiah chapter 19, we have this prophecy, and it's about end times, okay? And here's what Isaiah said under the influence of God, beginning in verse 18. In that day, there will be five cities in the land of Egypt that speak the language of Canaan and swear allegiance to the Lord of hosts. Five cities in Egypt will be known as Christian cities. Right now, when you go to Egypt, there are giant statues of Ramses on every border. They're huge statues. And he put them there to scare people so that when they came into the land, they would know there is a fierce, ferocious, there's a Pharaoh that is there. Now we're beginning to see in this time, they will be called, uh, the, they'll speak the language of Canaan, which is the Jewish language, and they will be called, they will swear a liar, alliance to God. Not only that, in that day there will be an altar to the Lord in the middle of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord on its borders. Instead of Ramses, a pillar to the Lord. And the Lord will make himself known to the Egyptians, and the Egyptians will know the Lord, and the Lord will strike Egypt healing, and they will return to the Lord. And in that day there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and Assyria will come into Egypt, and Egypt into Assyria, and Egypt will worship with the Assyrians. Now listen to this. And in that day, Israel will be the third with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the earth. And the Lord of hosts has blessed it, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, Israel, my inheritance. The second most mentioned country in the word of God is Egypt. Place after place says God loves Egypt. I see in your bulletin y'all are going to have a vacation Bible school, right? Safa's vacation Bible school last year was 41,000 kids. You ready for Bible school? This year he's saying 60,000 children. Children are coming to Christ. Children are being baptized. How do you change a nation? Not with old folks. We're too mean, hateful, and stubborn. But when a new generation of children come up who know the Lord from the time they're small, that nation knows the Lord. And the Bible has said, in that day when our God comes back and says, this is it, I'm reestablishing this world, Egypt and Assyria, two hated foes. Egypt and Assyria, those who had long opposed God, will be part of the three that God says are blessed. That means everything I'm asking you to do right now and continue to do is pointing towards that day when our Lord returns and the work has been done and Egypt knows the Lord. That ought to got somebody moving. Egypt is going to know the Lord. No more will it be dangerous to witness and talk about your faith because the country is going to be God's because of the faithful work of churches like you made up of people like you who have a vision for a country many of you have never gone to. I want you to pray. The things that we're seeing in Egypt are impossible except for prayer. Do you remember Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They conquered a nation that had captured them. It was done by prayer. Nothing touched them. Moses, a shepherd, 
brought the Pharaoh, the most powerful man on earth, down to his knees. There is nothing that prayer cannot take care of. There is no wall that can stop prayer. I can't walk up to a, a, a Muslim person and begin to share my faith with them in Egypt. But I can pray and ask God to open their heart that they can hear prayer. Then giving. It takes money, folks. I, you know, it's amazing. We know that everything costs money except church work. Right, Pastor? <laughs> Isn't that right? You know, the, the committee that goes and gets a pastor says, Lord, if, if you'll keep him, uh, if you'll keep him uh, humble, we'll keep him broke. And, uh, you know, somehow that's our philosophy. Like we just get what we need any time. Well, we do, but there's a caveat, trusting God. I love the Malachi passage of Scripture where, you know, that's the last thing God said to, to Israel for 450 years. God didn't speak no more, but he was chiding them because they weren't faithful. And, and you need to understand the Lord God is sarcastic at times. He really is. You need to read Scripture. And he looked at Israel and he said, I tell you what, boys, trust me. I tell you what, try me. See, you see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that you can't collect. You give. Do you realize that everything we have is not ours? There's no such thing as a self-made man or a woman. There's no such thing of you making your money and you buying your house. Everything that we have literally is a blessing from God. We get to use his stuff, his toys, and then we go away and we carry nothing with us. Never seen a U-Haul trailer on the back of a hearse. There's a story of a man that was so mean that demanded his wife put every dollar in his bank account in his casket, and he had several million dollars, and he pounded that into her head. <clears throat> and the pastor knew the lady was just, you know, just beaten down. And so the day of the funeral after the pastor had preached the, the funeral service, everybody walked by. This lady went up to visit her husband's casket, and she dropped something in the casket. Afterwards, the pastor said, what was that you put in his casket? She said, I wrote him a check for all the money that he had. <clears throat> a lot of truth to that, folks, because that guy can't even cash a check. But you know what? Another favorite passage of mine. See, y'all need to know something. I don't have a lot of money. Most of my, my churches were small. God called me to a ministry of fixing stuff. That's Southern talk, fixing. We're fixing to go over here and we're fixing to go over there. But this fixing I'm talking about is taking something that's wrong and biblically putting it right. And that's what I did. Uh, every church that I have ever pastored now run in excess of 5,000 people. When I got there, they didn't have hardly anybody, and they didn't pay hardly anything. They didn't believe I needed insurance nor retirement. So I tell you that not as a sob story, because every day I was amazed how I never missed anything. My three sons never, ever had to not do something other kids got to do because we didn't have the money. It just, it just came. Uh, it, it was amazing. But it's the story of faithfulness. And it's a story that, Pastor, I don't know that we hear this text in a right tone. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul is basically talking about an offering that is going to go to a group of poor churches. 
Okay? Now, you need to understand, in the book of Acts is the story of how the gospel went from Jerusalem to all over the world. They got the gospel all over the world. A bunch of uneducated people took the gospel literally everywhere. And, and this is the story, the Corinthian church. And so what was happening, the poor people's churches depended on help from the older churches. And they were continually planting, planting, planting. And here's God's, this is God's story of economics for Christians. Ninth chapter of 2 Corinthians, verse 6. Y'all got, y'all got your paper out or your iPhone or iPad? Okay. The point is this. Whoever sows sport sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. This is the law of the harvest. Aren't you glad that when you plant one little old nugget of corn, only one nugget don't come up, right? Bunch of nuggets come up on a bunch of stalks. That's the law of the harvest. You get back what you planted, but you get back more of it. And the Bible's biblical law is this. If you're stingy, God is stingy. And there are a lot of people who think God is stingy because they cry, he's never given me nothing, and the issue is neither have they because it's a law of God. God said, if you're busy in my kingdom work, then I'm going to give you energy. I'm going to give you health. I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to give you wisdom. And I'm going to get, you're going to be operating on my dime. You know, I don't want to win several million dollars. I just want somebody to hand me a credit card that's worth that much and say, anything you need, Cliff, do it. I mean, wouldn't that be nice? That's basically what God's saying. He's saying, I want you, bu- he wants you busy reaching Milford for Jesus Christ. Because the light that shines brightest, the furthest, shines brighter at home. Sends out a huge beam. He wants you to be a part of everything you're doing missionally. And he wants you to put aside saying, well, that's about all we can do, Pastor. No, you don't know what you can do. You've never tested God to the fullest ink. He goes on. Each must give as he's decided in his heart. Now, that's why I, I like this passage because I'm not here to sell you. You can do what you want to. I, I just want to tell you what God has to say. Don't do it under compulsion. Don't do it because I ask you. Listen, I had a guy, a pastor accused me. He said, you're trying to talk my church into doing something. I said, no, sir, I'm not because I don't particularly like the town this church is in. And if I talk them into it, i got to come back every week and re-talk them into it, and I don't want to come back no more. So I'm not trying to talk you into anything. I'm trying to tell you this is what's going to happen if you're faithful to God. Okay? We got that settled? You are to give and be a hysterical. That's the Greek. Not cheerful. Hysterical. Because God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Let me explain that to you in the Greek. I looked up the word all in the Greek. And you know what it means? All. (laughs) Raise my hand. I looked up the word everything. You know what that means? Everything. God has said when you say yes, you are going to have all sufficiency in all things at all times, and you will abound in every good work. That means, Pastor, 
people are going to come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ because your work of spreading the gospel in this town is going to carry on over into all over Ohio, in Kentucky, anywhere it goes. People are going to be coming here because you know what? People today want to know what that church believes and how firm they are. We have a generation that don't like denominations. Sorry, look it up. They don't like it. They don't trust people because they've been lied to. But people today that don't like church are looking for a church that is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, that is living the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they are bearing the fruit of Jesus Christ in everything that they do. You can't outgive, you can't outwork, you can't outthink, you can't outpray God. I have a vivid imagination. When I was a kid, I had an imaginary friend. Drove my parents crazy. He was my buddy. So, all my life, I, I can envision stuff. But there's a verse in the Bible that says, He is able, God, to do more, much more, than I'm able to think of or imagine. In fact, the word is exceedingly more. Do you realize we're serving a God that when you think of something good and it will bring glory to God's name, he can do better than that? He can take you into realms you've never been in your life. And you know, really, that's the story of missions. That's the story. I live one of my dreams. It's to be somewhere, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they pray and ask Christ. And just as I baptize them and bring them out of the water, the sky breaks open and God says, that was the last one. I'm coming to get you. Woo! Wouldn't that be great to be on that, to see that? Oh, listen. You have not lived as a Christian. Until you, listen, y'all can look at me and tell I don't have anything to offer as far as good looks or anything like that. Most of you are paying more attention to my eye than what I said. And I want to put it to rest, Pastor Todd did not hit me. <laughs> the streets of Pittsburgh, their sidewalks are not level. And I came out of a ball game Pittsburgh lost, I laughed, and I fell flat. <laughs> Sidewalk rose up and smoked me. <laughs> so, now y'all listen to what I'm saying. Very gently, there's already a work going on. You cannot say, I cannot afford to support my church and support missions because God has said, if you give generously, I'll give generously. And when you go on, it says you will have sufficiency for every occasion and every good work. Now, here's the thing. If you don't believe God will do that, I want you to take the ninth chapter of Second Corinthians and rip it out of your Bible, okay? Because obviously, if you don't believe he'd do that, that's a lie. And then come to think of it, you might as well throw the whole Bible in the trash because if God lies about one thing, nothing else in this word you can depend on. I am challenging you. It's not about money. I am challenging you to live in means and ways beyond you have ever lived in your life with an excitement of what God is doing doing. Bring this down to a home project. If you have children, gather your children, pray for Egypt, teach them how to give toward. $25 a month will change the life of an Egyptian pastor. Do you realize that? There's 46% inflation in Egypt. 
When I started going to Egypt in 2018, the average person, 90% of the country, made $1 a day. It's up to $4 a day, but inflation's 46%. We throw away more food and more money that an Egyptian family could live on for years. I want to see Milford move out. Recently, I went to a church and challenged them. They bought a case of the books. Uh, they committed to 25000 a year. Two of their people is going with one of our people in May to Egypt. Nine more is going with another one of my men in November. They're praying, they're giving, and they're going, and they're excited. You see, at Tomoka, we celebrate missions every Sunday. It's not something you celebrate once a year. I want you to just think about what I've, what I've asked you, because I, I could go on for several hours. Even when you cut me off, I'd stand here and talk. To know the fullness of God is the greatest experience that we as Christians can experience, to know him. Not, not a little bit. You go into a doctor's office and they tell you that news you don't want to hear. Instead of just absolutely your life falling apart, trust in God because he's sovereign. And however it turns out, it's going to be the best. Have you ever thought about that? It's going to be the best. We are his children. He doesn't give us second-hand stuff. Whatever the decision. I mean, think about this. And this, this world's a mess, folks. I don't know how it is in Ohio. Down where I come from, it's a mess. They got some stupid people running this country. I, I, I can't even think in the same time zone they're thinking in. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, if you know God to the fullest and you're trusting him, you will never, ever have to worry. You'll never have an ulcer. You'll never have a case of anxiety because you know that God, while he loves the world, he loves you as an individual. He knows your name and he knows my name. He's a personal God that when you say, my father, it's almost like he says, yeah, what do you need? That's Bible. And I want to tell you something I learned about 35 years ago. Pastor, it made me a rebel among other pastors, but I don't care. I don't argue with anybody over Scripture. I believe with all my heart that everything that's written, stuff I understand, some stuff I don't, is absolutely true. And I also learned that my opinion don't mean nothing. Because if we talk about my opinion and your opinion, we're going to get mad at each other and we're going to fight. But when people come to me and want to fight about the Bible, I say, okay, we'll discuss it under this deal. I believe that whatever the Bible says is true. So when we have a conversation, I'm going to answer you what the Bible says. I'm not going to tell you my opinion. And you know I haven't had an argument in years because that's the way it is. And if this Bible isn't true, like I said, shut it and go live like you want to. But I want you to know God to the fullest. I want you to abound in every good work. I don't want Egypt to be the only thing y'all do. I want you going all over the world. But I'm here to talk about a place that God said, one day my enemy will be blessed 
and I'm going to put a highway from enemy to enemy in the presence of my people. All right, I'm going to, y'all have any Methodists in the area? Y'all probably want to beat them to lunch, don't you? Come by and get some material. Come by and buy this book. Would you, as individuals, commit 25 a month, 50 a month, to help us? See, there's 13 churches that Safa has started, and we don't know how we're going to finish them. I'm not worried because God knows how they, we're going to get them finished, and probably with a lot of Milford's help. And then I want you to pray for us every day. And then I want Pastor T Todd to call me and say, Cliff, I've got about 15, 20 people that want to go to Egypt next year. Do you got somebody that will take us? And I'll send somebody up or I'll, I'll come myself. But most importantly, maybe somebody invited you here and this, or maybe you come every once in a while and, you're not really interested in this because you've never really experienced the saving faith of Jesus Christ. The most important thing you can understand today is that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What's important to know is it don't matter who you are right now. If you knew my real resume of what I was, you wouldn't let me on this property. And I'm not bragging about that. I hate it. But Jesus said, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things become new. Do y'all remember what all means? Jesus said, instantly you are a new creation in my sight. And then for the rest of your life, you're going to learn how to be who you are. That's called sanctification, learning to become. When a baby duck is born, all it knows is it's born. It doesn't know it can swim or anything else. But the baby duck learns to be a duck. We're learning to be Christians. So that's what I offer you first and foremost. I'm sure your pastor will talk to you, others. You don't, I mean, if you want to come here and pray, if you want to come now, if you want to talk to somebody later, do it. Because that's the most important thing in the world. Because you know what? All of this could be moot. Because prophecies have been fulfilled, and every morning when I ride to work, I'm riding towards the east. And I look at that sun come up and I wonder, is Jesus the brightness of the morning? He could come and that's it. But until he comes, we got to reach people for Christ. And we got to win Egypt to Christ. Because when he comes back, he's looking for a country to call blessed. Father, today, I stand on your word. Your word is truth absolute. Each person here, Lord, you know their hearts. So I ask you to work on their hearts and in their hearts according to the need that you see. Bless this pastor. Lord, I pray that you so Fill him with your presence. Lord, he'll be like David. Only thing he needs is a few rocks and a slingshot. Because, Lord, there's demons and there's evil here in this town. And I pray that you stand with this man, that you may show him, that you would lead him, that he may never, ever fear. Help him to realize that he goes on my list of young men that's going to be on this earth should you delay your coming far after I'm gone. So I'm praying for him and the race he's running. I'm praying for Milford Church. In Christ's name, amen.
Thank you, Pastor.